All right, guys, so something a little bit different from my usual street food videos today. As you can see, it looks like I'm in someone's front room, and I pretty much am in someone's front room. I'm at home, Chef Dylan's chef's table, but it's not really a stuffy sit-down dinner. This is one guy's mission to feed you the best food possible in the coziest, most comfortable, non-stuffy setting ever. The food here is a Michelin, not even, forget Michelin, this is above all that. This is top, top, top grade food in the most comfortable setting imaginable. I love this, I know you're gonna love this, so let's go. So what do you have? Welcome to home, everybody. Um, I'm Dylan. I'm just gonna give a quick rundown of how this works and what's going to happen. Um, I like to tell everybody that this is the world's most casual Thai restaurant, in which it is. Um, I am half American, but the food is 100% Thai. Um, you have a menu in front of you. I'm just going to show you what you're going to get. We're going to start with an amuse-bouche, do a couple starters, and then I'm going to go away for like 20 minutes and everything's going to come out at the same time. Um, a lot of the food is based on recipes from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I've got a collection of cookbooks that I like to use. Um, but more and more these days, I'm just cooking whatever I want. Really, just I wish you to feel like you're just eating dinner at a friend's house. That's kind of what's happening. Very chill, chill, survive, survive. Okay. Shall we get started? Yes. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. First bite of the night, we have mamuang uh, prio nam plawang. So, sour mango with sweet fish sauce. So, um, this is a very common Thai snack. Uh, if you're Thai, you've surely had it before. Um, but I wanted to go reference something uh, that's very specific to me and probably a lot of other people too. There is a yadong shack over here, not too far. Uh, as many neighborhoods have, they got the little local bamboo hut and the guy that's selling local booze. It's like uh, yadong being like um, rice liquor and they mm. ferment it with a bunch of different spices. Uh, so the guy over here, he serves his with uh, green mango and sweet fish sauce. Often you'll get like green mango and chili salt to snack with it. But he does sweet fish sauce and chili salt if you want. So we use an old recipe for sweet fish sauce. Uh, we have coconut cream, fish sauce, and good palm sugar just to reduce down so really thick. Then we use some of the yadong that he sells and we put that in there as well. That's all reduced and thick. We mix in some dried prawns, fried shallots. Fresh shallot on top, chili, a little mandarin zest. Pick it up, eat it with your hands. Take one bite. Hello, I'm not. Enjoy, Kat. All right, look at this funky yeah. light I'm under. So, we, what have we got? So bad. So we've got sour mango with yadong and sweet fish sauce. And this is why I love this place. Um, I, I love this from last time, right? So there's a story behind every dish, but it's not like, it's not like, uh, it's not like over the top and arrogant. And you know, like it all comes from like a really, really um, authentic place. But let's, uh, I'm absolutely starving. So I'm gonna grab this amuse-bouche and, uh... all right, so to be honest guys, yadong, doesn't sound great to me. Uh, if you don't know what yadong is, yadong is, uh, it sends shivers down my spine. A lot of the time it's on the menu is moonshine. It's a local spirit, uh, some Thai herbs and spices. But with sour mango and sweet fish sauce, could, could pull this back for me. No, I'm honest, I can't really taste any yadong, but, mm. You got everything you need there. You got you got sweet. You got like a sort of sticky, almost butterscotchy sweetness from the palm sugar. Hyper sour mango. Um, texturally, it's amazing. Um, you got a little bit of umami from the shrimp uh, and a touch of heat from the chili. It's a good start. Next dish, the first uh, dish dish on the menu. This is yam uh, bai miang in Thai or a tea leaf salad. Um, so, the funny thing about this is this is not a Thai dish at all, this is a Burmese dish. Um, but I wanted to put it on the menu because it is important to recognize the fact that uh, Myanmar people make up a large population of Thailand doing much of the work that Thai people do not want to do. Uh, it often goes underappreciated and overlooked, so I wanted to give a little tribute to that. Um, there's obviously, of course, many ways to do that. Uh, this is my way today. Um, so. If you've been to Myanmar, or if you know anything about Burmese food, uh, tea leaf salad is a huge part of the cuisine. Um, most of the major markets in Thailand have a Burmese area in which you can find this. This one I based off of a shop in Pakanong. 
Uh, it's a woman named Sheila, and she makes a really good version, so I asked her how to do it. Um, and she gave me some tips, but of course I zhuzhed it up to how I wanted to do it a little bit too. Uh, so we have some organic uh, fermented tea leaves from up in Chiang Mai, monsoon tea. We chop those up with some shredded cabbage. Uh, we put some cucumber in there, there's some shredded pak chi Um Crispy garlic, crispy tua pak a, um, dried prawns, and then we make a dressing of the tea leaves, grilled tomatoes, vinegar, fish sauce, and lots of garlic oil. Mix it all up, you get all these crazy textures and flavors going on. So, enjoy. Awesome. Guys, I, keep, I sound like a broken record in every video, but mm. I keep talking about textures. Really you know how... It. Unbelievable, isn't it? You know how important textures are to me, and there's so much going on here. You've got the soft cucumber, mm. the crunchy garlic, but there's also some crispy beans in here. So yeah. crispy dried broad beans. It's slightly sour, but not overpowering. Um, no sweetness, a little bit of acidity. But it's literally all about, all about the textures and absolutely perfectly, perfectly seasoned. As Adam said, next meal, we'll get them on camera in a minute, if it kills me. This is like a step up from your, from your average market tea leaf salad, which I absolutely love anyway. But um, this is, uh, and, if Dylan's not watching me, I'm going to put the bowl into my pocket for later. Alright, next up. Uh, second half. We have uh, Saitwa. Everyone lives in Thailand, I'm sure they know Saitwa. Northern Thai pork sausage. Uh, but we do it our way. Um, so we make the sausage ourselves. Uh, make a, it's like a hand pounded red curry paste, two pounds of pork, two cuts of pork. Lots of fat in there, and then every morning we mix it with a bunch of fresh herbs. So mm -hmm. when you stuff into a casing, you don't get to do that, but because we're doing it this way, we can. So we got like chopped uh, coriander, Vietnamese mint, betel leaf, uh, sliced shallots, lemongrass, sliced galangal. Mix it, and we stuff it into a banana chili, batter it, and deep fry it. Then instead of just serving you the sausage, which we used to do, uh, we serve it as a little meal. So you have half a steamed duck egg, some long leaf coriander, and then we make a sauce from dried bang chang chilies, uh, fish sauce, tomatoes, and then lots of maquen, northern Thai prickly ass, Szechuan peppercorn. I'm just gonna drizzle that on top. Go ahead, enjoy that. I'm gonna go away and make your dinner now. Easy. Okay, so this one I didn't even know was being served, right? And if you guys, um, talking about stories, uh, cause Dylan has a story behind every dish. I also have a story to share with you. The first thing I ever ate in Thailand when I came here specifically for food. I usually tell people it's cow soy, but that's not actually strictly true. The very first thing I ate at a market was Sai Ua, the Northern Thai sausage. And for me, I've never eaten anything that tastes more Thai. Like everything you associate with Thailand, uh, galangal, lime leaves, lemongrass, uh, shallots, garlic, everything into one sausage. And it's not like a hot dog, it's like, a, like an actual, what we would consider to be a sausage. So, um, I'm so excited that they've stuffed a chili, deep fried it, and then served it with the gummiest, gummy, is that an adjective? It is now. Gummy, it is now. Gummiest duck egg you've ever seen in your life, topped off with a smoky chili sauce. I want to get, try and get a little bit of everything. Super, super crispy. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there's so much going on here. Again, texturally, with the super crispy, crunchy, flaky, almost pastry-like batter around the fatty, soft uh, pork sausage, but flavor-wise as well. Mm. So you've got the fresh pounded semi-spicy red curry paste. Like encased in that super, super soft, fatty. This is the 
This is the key, the, the amount of fat that's in this site or. But, it, I don't know, somehow it's, it's, it's fatty without being greasy. Mm. And what hits you, which I think you need because it's so fatty, the pork and it's been deep fried is the abundance of fresh herbs. That's freshening everything up on the back end. Yo, yeah, yeah, Dan. How Hi. is it? Good. Thank you for inviting us here. It's just amazing. Thank you for coming. This is only three dishes. I couldn't eat one of them, but two of them are really delicious and lovely. It's worth coming here. And she loves it. Come here. Chapman, I like it. Chapman, I like it. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Eric, and uh, I'm going to basically just be taking your plates. Uh, uh, if you could just put your silverware off to the side, I'll take all your plates. Uh, yeah. Come on, Eric, something more interesting than that. That's all I say right now, yeah. What's your Instagram? My Instagram is Stir Fry Together. And I didn't know he was going to be here, and I'm not just saying this, but it's one of the best Instagram profiles you're going to find on food, on Sky Food for sure. Um, he's always randomly like cooking for his neighbours and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's brilliant. So links in the description, guys. Get following these guys. They know what they're talking about. They know what they're talking about. No, so in the, in the sauce that came with us. So the really the interesting rice. thing in the sauce, which I couldn't work out, even though Dylan actually told me, because obviously he wasn't paying attention, was the macwen. If you don't know what macwen is, it's like a cousin of Szechuan pepper, but it doesn't have the same like intense numbing. Uh, like spicy mala numbing flavor like it's just got like a very floral almost like I thought it's a rise I'm not rise only gingery kind of taste but this on when you got to naan in northern Thailand it is on absolutely everything it's a it's a it's a spice that's very close to my heart so yeah. I, we just changed the menu this is the first round for a few of these things um, but I, I think this one's quite nice uh, the first one I brought over here this is a lawn uh, the Thai people will know, you guys will know too. So we have a relish, always with something cured or fermented, uh, simmered in coconut cream. In this case, we have a talkio lom. So we have some fermented soybeans. Uh, we simmer that in smoked coconut cream with a little bit of chili, some mangung. And then we mix in a bunch of blue crab. Uh, add some green chili, fresh shallot, and coriander at the end. Um, to eat with it, we have some assorted herbs and veggies, some bitter, some sour, some spicy, some cucumber, some white turmeric and then some deep fried by that crude or garuda quality from the south. So you get this crispiness to go with the creaminess of the lung. After that, we have a yum sum o, pomelo salad. Um, so we all know pomelo salad. I wanted to do a version that is not like the one you get most of the time, which is chili jam, betta leaf sort of thing. So this is very like, more like sap style. Um, two kinds of pomelo, quite spicy dressing made with yellow chili, pick galliang also, um, roselle vinegar, um, a little bit of dipli or long pepper in there as well. Coconut cream, we mix in the sour shimon leaves, mint, fried garlic, shallots, and then um, lots of lemongrass as well. After that, right here, we have a very interesting curry. So this is called, uh, in a cookbook I have, this is a mix of two recipes. The first recipe being uh, Penang Gai So, so fresh Penang chicken. And then there's another recipe, Nha Ping Penang. So I mix those two together, sure. But the interesting thing about it, we all know Penang curry. It's nothing like a Penang curry that we know. Um, it's a simple red curry paste. Um, no spices, no peanuts, nothing like that. Just chilies and aromatics. Um, in the chicken recipe, you shred up fresh chicken that you steam, and then you pour the curry on top. So we took the grilled beef from the other recipe that we have, no pink Penang, and then we pour the sauce on top. So we use smoked coconut cream in that to give it a very smoky aromatic flavor. Um, the beef is, we say it's grilled, but we technically smoke it. Uh, we use uh, something very similar to a jasper, but it costs way less. Le way less. We use a bucket uh, over really high heat with a bunch of aromatics like coconut, uh, pandan, star anise in the bottom. Cook it really fast so it gets super smoky and crunchy on the outside. Um, it's very tasty. It's a very tasty dish. Very strange. Do not call it a Penang. Someone's going to be mad at me for saying it's a Penang. <laughs> what the book says. Penang sauce. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's okay. whatever, it's, you know. And it's just Penang steak things. is plate steak, right? Like the middle of the belly. Yeah. Right? So I'm not a real yeah. no, Okay, cool. It's very tender. Very tender. Um, after that, 
to balance that out, to the sweetness of this, we have gang som, kind of a southern type style. Very interesting recipe. Uh, it's a very thick, very spicy gang som. Uh, it's got lots of black pepper in it as well as lemongrass, and we also put a little bit of long pepper in there as well. Um, make it quite spicy. We have some tiger prawns, grilled pineapple, and then we finish it with holy basil. So, start with that. More is coming. Enjoy. Well, I'll put him in, I'll put him in. You want to know? You might as well say something. Good? Very, very, very. All of it's amazing. Really good. Listen, he's, he's the harshest food critic that isn't a food critic in... You are though, aren't you? He's solid. The harshest solid. food... He should be a food vlogger, but he's not. But he's... He knows more about food than you ever. So far, that the burnt pineapple and prawn thing is absolutely I'm outstanding. Have you tried these? Uh, no, I haven't got a fire yet. I'm still working my way over that side of the table. It's crispy. I've forgotten what they're called already, but the idea is to dip it into this lawn. Most people have had nampik. Nampik is chili paste, but nampik would be fresh. So you would usually just pound fresh ingredients like shrimp paste, lime juice, shallots, chilies, etc., etc. Lon is cooked usually, and it always has to have something fermented in. So this has got tau tiao in it, which is yellow bean paste, coconut, prawn, blue crab. I'm a sucker for tau tiao anyway. I love anything with fermented beans in it, but this is, uh, again, the, it's incredible how much depth is in every single dish. Um, it's, it's, it's hard for, like, even someone who's as good as me, um, it's hard for me to pick out um, even two or three of the flavours here. But I will try it. Mm, soft, soft crab meat. Everything here is balanced. You've got sweet, salty, funky, like umami. And again, it's got that smoke. It's got, like, everything seems to have, like, a background smokiness and if you haven't tried wasabi isan you haven't lived right so I'm gonna get with this panang side the fresh fresh panang the outside of the I was gonna say brisket it's not it's plate steaks it's like in between the brisket and the flank and he's managed to get it like completely blackened on the outside like how you know like sort of southern american barbecue style very very pink and rare on the inside i think that's one of the things that impresses me most about dylan's cooking is the incorporation of the smoking that he does now it should always smoking over aromatics coconut i think it said star anise a few different things it's always building, he's always thinking about building layers and layers of flavor with layers and layers of texture. It's semi-sweet from the palm sugar. There's no peanuts in this, but it still tastes like there's peanuts in this. It's still got that thick, it's rich, rich creamy mouthfeel like you think you've got peanuts. And apparently they're getting that from deep fried shallots and garlic pounded into the paste, which gives you the illusion of having that like extra layer of fat and nuttiness without actually having any nuts in. So it has, a Penang vibe, no spice, but again, like I say, like um, when I say no spice, I mean no spice. It has a heat to it. It's got chilies in it, um, so it's hot, semi-sweet, nutty without actually having any nuts in. Um, poured over that beautiful, crispy, blackened beef plate. Very impressed. Guys, I'm going to go in with this Geng Som, which is uh, sour southern curry, which I'm looking forward to. Probably most out of everything. Blackened, grilled, uh, flame grilled pineapple. Um, and if you know me and you've been watching my videos, you know how much of a fan I am of pineapple in curries for sweetness. You've got also natural sweet fat prawns. Again, it's, every, it's very, very peppery. It's got, um, I don't know if you said this, but I'm pretty sure there's DP in this, DP, uh, long pepper. Um, so you've got like that intense sort of black pepper flavor, loads and loads of chili. It's sweet from the pineapple, and I love natural sweetness from pineapple in curries, rather than like 
cheap white sugar sweetness. The prawn is cooked to absolute perfection, soft, bouncy, uh, not overcooked in the slightest. Um, and as I said, naturally sweet. I'm definitely not used to having holy basil, uh, baker bao in uh, geng som, but that works for me. Goes very nicely with the rest of the peppery flavors. And um, sour wise, we've got som gek, which is a, a traditional Southern Thai fruit souring agent. He's also using lime and maku lime or kaffir lime. So we've got like a deep tartness, like som gek is al al almost got like a, a tamarind kind of uh, tart sourness and then you've got that sharp sharp lime juice again guys we're talking pretty incredible right next one to the yum sum or some or is if you don't know is a uh, pomelo which is a type of grapefruit same family as grapefruit but a lot less bitter than grapefruit we've got two types we've got the yellow one and we've got the pink one um, usually yum sum or is far too sweet for me with the uh, pig powder chili paste and the abundance of palm sugar they put in here. There's no chili paste in this. I think there's a little bit of palm sugar, loads of herbs, and loads and loads of lemongrass. Mmm. And what I forgot to mention it's the grilled kingfish, king mackerel. Mmm. One of the meatiest fish you're gonna find. Super light and super fresh compared to a normal uh, yum sum or uh, pomelo salad. A lot lighter, a lot fresher, um, and a lot, lot less sweet. A little bit more sourness. And I absolutely, as you know, adore lemongrass. So the more lemongrass on something, the better. And the addition of the kingfish, genius. So Dan, as, 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 as the only Thai guy on the table, yeah. what'd you do? Oh, wonderful. Um, I've been to many places, and as a Thai perspective, the food has its development. This food might have some other recipe that you guys might not have seen before. But to me, for example, like this, the, um, the Penang is something out of my world. I don't think anything like this, but I have it. I love it and I don't know if I can find it somewhere else but this is it and the other dish just like Gary said it has some something special about it it has some secret recipe within it so the detail of it is really delicate you have to come here and try it yourself you, I can't just describe it guys yeah yeah I like it next up we have a soup of roast pork collar uh, not collar pork neck um, Shallots, a broth of 24 hour pork bones, and some sand ginger powder. And we finish with Thai basil and fried garlic. Very simple soup. But it should kind of remind you of like a you know. Anyways, very soothing, simple. It's going to calm down some of those more intense stuff. Alright, guys, last but certainly not least, well, it's not even the last because the ice cream is going to come out, but last of the savory dishes um, is this uh, 24 hour stewed pork soup. Uh, like a nam sai, but the flavor on this is incredible. Again, smoked uh, pork jiao, uh, mu yang, or smoked mu yang. I don't know, how would you say it? Not sure. Not sure. But anyway, again, very, very savory. Where they've stewed the bones down for so long, you've also almost got like a milky very very intense pork broth very very salty umami i mean that in a good way um thick slightly gelatinous the mouth feels incredible you've got the freshness coming from the thai basil the aniseedy freshness on the back end i could not give this any more superlatives if i had tried guys this 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 has been uh, nothing short of incredible so i have two desserts here uh, the first one being Kunal Mokang, made fresh every day by this guy right here. I knew right. he did something more interesting and take the plate. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is 
ชนอลมอแกงอร่อยที่สุดในโลกนะครับเจงเจง no so it's the best m o k a n g in the world so we tell people um this is pretty classic recipe however we add a couple things like Regency brandy little orange oh, zest and then we brulee the top our recent guest let us know that you do not use Regency brandy or orange zest in a traditional m o k a n g We finish it, of course, with fried shallots, and we use smoked coconut cream. To go with that, so we get this little cake and ice cream thing going on. We have k o n o m p i a k b u n flavored ice cream from Saki at Yora in t a l a t n o i So you have those two together. They are very tasty. Please enjoy in a cup. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is great. So s a b a y s a b a y Yeah. This is all I want here. s a b a y s a b a y Right, last one, guys. As I always preach, right. So you up and coming, budding YouTubers, don't ever pretend that you know something that you don't know, because you'll just get found out. I have absolutely no idea what this dessert is, but it must be a famous Thai dessert, right? It is. What's it called? Kanomokang. m o k a n g Yeah. Don't eat Thai desserts. I don't eat any desserts, so I don't know about Thai desserts. It's got the sort of consistency of like a toffee pudding. Um. And I never thought I would enjoy it. The ice cream is unbelievable, by the way. But um, I never thought when he said there was crispy fried h o m t i a o fried shallots on top, I thought that's a bit weird. But actually, <laughs> works. again, it works. In fact, nothing hasn't worked here, guys. Um, uh, I'm so full. Um, there's so much food, and he's asking if we want more food. Um, The 2,001. I want to say it's 2,150 watt plus plus. I've got to say it's worth it for the experience. Um, for me, as I said earlier in the video, I don't like stuffy um, five star restaurants uh, where you can't talk, you can't be loud, um, and you can't bring your own beer. Uh, not for me. This is a very very homely experience. You've got the chef who has got to be one of the most talented chefs I've met. In Thailand, uh, and I know a few. Um, literally explaining every dish to you. You can hear them in the kitchen. We're sitting li literally next to the kitchen. He's got a great team. He's a great guy. Um, so, guys, a lot of you. Basically, the reason I did this video because a lot of you have been asking me for non-street food recommendations. For me, this is my non-street food recommendation. If you can get a seat, book well in advance, guys. Links with descriptions. Uh, all that good stuff will be in the description box below. Make sure you get over and follow Dan Bangkok. You can't follow Adam because he still doesn't have a channel or any sort of uh, social media. But um, get booked on here, guys. I will see you again next week for some more Bangkok street food. For now, that's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks to the guys. You want to say a little something to me? I don't know what that means. Uh, what, uh, I don't know. How, how has it been working at home? Let's start uh, with that. I call it Chili's Paradise. Yeah. Yeah, it is Chili's. I coined that term, but uh, yeah, it's great. I love working here. It's my favorite. It's my favorite job. Nice. Ron. Yes. Uh, do you like working here? Yeah, I love to be here every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the salad was amazing. j e s u d i m a d e Oh yeah, j e s u d i m a d e We're a good team. The yeah. great team, guys. Really well the best. Yeah, I got lucked out. We've had, yeah. we've had some other people come through. Some great, <laughs> <laughs> some great, some not so great. You know. We're not gonna name names on camera. Work, right? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it works. It works best when it's the three of us, for sure. Yeah. Well, the 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 bond you guys have definitely shines through in the food. So thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Thank Absolutely you. enjoyed that. So much. You know, it's it's been a couple of years since you were here last. It's been think, three years. I think it? we've I think we've grown since. Definitely, hundred percent. Right. Bizu. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much.